Then they've worked this thing on us where we can't work together, won't work together. They have purposely, insidiously planted the distrust of one black for another because they know that if we ever get together, if we ever become one, we will become dangerous. Instead of relying on the white man, we'll rely upon our own abilities and our own resources. But as long as they can keep us dependent upon them, then we never come into our own. Professor Stamp points out this fact, and I quote, Here then was the way to produce the perfect slave. Accustom him to rigid discipline, demand from him unconditional submission, impress upon him his innate inferiority, develop in him a paralyzing fear of white men, train him to adopt the master's code of good behavior, and instill in him a sense of complete dependence. Many of us, we won't even accept anything from another black man until the white man has given his approval. We, we have been the most loyal people to this nation than any of the immigrants that ever came here. We have fought in every one of America's war and then got treated like dogs after it. And then the nation has the gall to decide whether or not we should apologize to them. Maybe we ought to declare war on them and then maybe that'll get them to apologize. You get, listen, you take, you took a group of people, brought them from their own native land, stripped them of their character, stripped them of their heritage, even stripped them of their family ties, purposely so that they couldn't get into agreement with each other. Took the father, grabbed him and sent him north, as it were. Took the wife, sent her south. Took the kids, sent them west. Took the other kids, sent them east. Split them up. Christian people did this. So-called Christian. Claimed to be Christian. Couldn't have been Christian. Couldn't know God. They could not know God and do that. Then you kept them in bondage and from 1619 to 1865. Worked them till they dropped dead. Because there's plenty of more of them in Africa, so just kill these. You don't, you don't maintain. You don't keep them healthy. You don't, you don't keep them up. Just let them die and then get some more. That's all. Just purchase some more. You got money, go buy some more. And that's what they did. And then some black folk got the nerve to talk about we shouldn't talk about reparations. We should let it go. Poor, simple-minded fool. <laughs> Japanese people who live here in the United States, Southern California area, Southern California area they, they shipped them out, put them in, in internment camps during the Second World War with Japan. After the war was over, through negotiations, they received every person $20,000 each and a formal apology. And our government, our nation, is wondering whether or not they're deciding whether or not they should apologize for enslaving blacks in America. Now, think about this. Now, this is what I'm talking about. See, we, this, this nation is wrong. I'm sorry. This nation is wrong. Now, watch this. Listen, here's why they're wrong. Here's why they're wrong. They won't even apologize to the best citizens that they've ever had. Now, listen, listen, listen. It wasn't black Africans from Nigeria that flew over Pearl Harbor on December the 7th and declared war on the United States of America. Approximately 3,000 plus Americans were killed by the Japanese on the day of Pearl Harbor when Japan declared war on the United States of America. And then after that, they gave them $20,000 apiece and apology for declaring war on them. And black people have been the most loyal people to the United States. They have never, ever declared war on the United States. Never. Listen, 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 listen. We, we have been the most loyal people to this nation than any of the immigrants that ever came here. We have fought in every one of America's war and then got treated like dogs after it. 
and then the nation has the goal to decide whether or not we should apologize to them. Maybe we ought to declare war on them, and then maybe that'll get them to apologize. I mean, right is right, doggone it. Right is right. That's just downright criminal. That's just downright criminal. We have fought in every single war. We have been butchered and destroyed and shot up and come back to this country and couldn't even get a job. Just because we were black. And you say you're going to decide whether you apologize? In God we trust. What God? Yes, you're gonna, you need to pay for slavery. Yeah. Your grandparents and your great, great, great grandparents, yeah. they did it, yeah. and you ought to pay. Yeah. Just like you're paying for everything else that your great, great grandparents did. Come on. Yeah. All the contracts and legal paraphernalia that they did with other nations and countries has bound the United States by certain limitations. You're, you have inherited that. I, how, come you, how come you don't squawk about that? Yeah. Only about paying for slavery you squawk about. Amen, Pastor. America, your problem is you need to get saved. <laughs> then they've worked this thing on us where we can't work together, won't work together. They have purposely, insidiously planted the distrust of one black for another because they know that if we ever get together, if we ever become one, we will become dangerous. <laughs> dangerous in the sense that we will begin to take charge of our own destiny. Instead of relying on the white man, will rely upon our own abilities and our own resources. But as long as they can keep us dependent upon them, then we never come into our own as humans and above all as true Christians. We African Americans have been, ever since the beginning of slavery, superbly brainwashed. It is a fact that the Willie Lynch letter cannot be historically validated. However, if we go by history, the principles outlined in his letter <laughs> have been at work among us in no uncertain terms. Even though the Willie Lynch letter cannot be historically proved to be authentic, there is another document that is similar in its purpose. Now, whether it's true or not, in actuality, I, I, can't, I can't say. I've searched everywhere. There is no actual historical validation for the authenticity of the Willie Lynch letter. <laughs> but whether the letter is authentic or not, everything in that turkey is in operation and has been for the last 400 years. They have worked a royal game on us and they are still working that game today in all 40 conservatively speaking 40 to 50 million Africans were abducted or killed by our white American and European foreparents end of quote huh. we get upset and righteously indignant, and rightly so, when we think about Adolf Hitler and the annihilation of six million Jews during World War II. But who gets righteously indignant and upset about 50 million black Africans who were abducted or killed by the forefathers of this nation? People want to get upset. I start talking about this, and people get upset. You don't get upset with the Jews for having the Holocaust Museum. Where be the Holocaust Museum over 50 million black Africans? What about the black Africans? 
See, that's the reason why so many blacks are ashamed of their ancestry, because we have been very subtly, all through the years, almost 400 years of this, implanted subtly, subliminally in the minds of us. We, a lot of you, you don't want to know nothing about Africa. You think that's really a no-no to know anything about Africa, because, see, the media, through the power structure, has always portrayed Africans as somebody running around with a loincloth on, bathing in a river and hanging from a tree, yes. swinging from tree to tree. Oh, Tarzan and the apes. And so we've been ashamed. See? You might as well fess up. Don't sit there looking at me like that. <laughs> the reason, hey, the reason I know this is because I used to be one of them. <laughs> until I got liberated, until I got set free. Amen. Now I know I'm black and I'm proud of it. <laughs> On page 148, Professor Stamp points out this fact, and I quote, Here then was the way to produce the perfect slave. Accustom him to rigid discipline, demand from him unconditional submission, impress upon him his innate inferiority, develop in him a paralyzing fear of white men, train him to adopt the master's code of good behavior, and instill in him a sense of complete dependence. They have, they worked a game on us. You know it's the truth. It's pitiful. Many of us, we won't even accept anything from another black man until the white man has given his approval. See, that's where the problem, see, that, see, that's how it's got to stop. And you white folks know it, that you, you have relatives and friends and loved ones that talk us down and talk about black folk like they got tail, and you just smile and cheese it up, and you don't say anything about it. You wouldn't do it because you don't feel that way, but you don't say anything to your loved ones that do. So they feel that it's, they have a license to continue to do it. The thing has to stop. <laughs>